Hey guys, welcome back to my video this week. So last week I showed how we put together the PAX wardrobe interiors and how I built the shelves and fitted everything inside. And this week we get to do all the fun stuff like the customization. So here's where we left off. And this week we're gonna take this wardrobe to this. So we're gonna make it look totally custom with the doors, the molding and so many more cool details. Let's get started. So the first thing we had to do was install the doors and I was actually really stumped because I wasn't sure if the hinges had to go into a specific hole, like were there different hinges for the top holes versus like the middle of the door. And no, it doesn't matter where you put the hinges. So just put them in in any order you want. So I got my husband to help me install the doors and this could be a one person job. If you're doing it on your own, just stack a couple of books at the bottom so that you can hold the doors in place. It's very similar to attaching like regular doors that would be in a door frame. But I think the best way to do it is to first install the very bottom hinge and the very top hinge and then just do the two middle hinges because then you don't actually need someone to hold them in place. One more thing, all of Ikea's instructions always tell you don't use a drill, just use a regular screwdriver. And I mean, you could totally do that, but I used a drill throughout the entire process because I feel like it would take you forever if you used a screwdriver. Um, and especially with the doors, you wanna make sure the screws are really tight so the doors aren't loose and I don't have that kind of hand strength. So it's really okay to just use the drill. Just make sure you aren't like stripping the screws. Close it. Close it. Oh, no, that was supposed to be such a glorious moment. <laughs> Wants to stay one minute to admire these doors because they're actually so, so nice. Like, I'm really impressed with these doors. The handles are not on yet, but check this out. The slow closed door, no slamming. So if your partner's like sleeping and you gotta get ready for work in the morning, it's like so sleek. I was really impressed with the selection of doors that Ikea has for the PAX wardrobe. There are so many different colors and styles. Um, I also really contemplated whether I was gonna add mirrors to my doors because I don't have another space for a full length mirror. Um, but in the end, I just went with four uniform doors because I like that it looked really high end. Like I actually am shocked at how good these doors look with the shaker style design. All right, so the doors are on. They look so good. We'll get that last one. on. Um, so initially I was thinking about adding some top trim, not all the way to the ceiling, but just like a little bit of something, something. Avas over here has an opinion and he believes that it looks perfectly good. It's like a great Ikea piece of furniture so and nice I don't to need to do it. anything. So I don't know. I'm still kind of on the fence. I don't know. All right, so now we're going to attach these metal handles um, and I think these are really beautiful and they're super affordable they're like $15 for two handles um, and they're like 12 inches big so I'm gonna put my handles here now I have a great hack and I've showed you this a few times so um, when you're attaching handles you want to make sure that they are level in the same position so visually they look good so you're gonna take the thickest kind of painters tape um, that you can find and then you're gonna cut it to the length of your handle, All right? So I've got my tape here, right? Okay, I'm gonna take a screw and I'm going to like, this is a screw that comes with a set, right? So I'm just going to screw this in, okay, top. And then screw this in the bottom, okay? So you're making a hole. So we're gonna cut the top of the tape so it is super straight. Okay. Now we're going to take it and you're going to kind of figure out where you want it to go. So. And line it up to some type of edge. Okay. So I'm lining it up to this edge here. Drill a hole directly on top. You only get one shot at this. Okay. 
So now, before you peel it off, what you want to do is move your tape. Use a level, All right? Make a mark here where you're gonna line up the tape. Okay? Really take your time and be precise with this step because if you aren't, then your handles are not gonna be level. So it's okay if you have to peel the tape off a few times and just position it again. And then just repeat the same process for the other set of doors. It's pretty straightforward. And honestly, these handles look so good. Just check them out. To make your wardrobe look much more high-end and custom, you wanna cover up all those holes. Those holes are important for when you're adding in the drawers, but once they're in, they just look unsightly. So one way um, that we can make this IKEA wardrobe look more custom and just like, you know, really, really high end is to cover up all of these holes. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys two ways to do that today. So um, you guys know I did my Billy bookcase, so I did it in that one too. That I did a different way. This, you can get these like little, I don't know, like little punch outs that you can basically put into all these holes. Um, so I'm going to put them in. It's going to be like the most tedious task, but I'll put some tunes on and do it. Although we're covering up the holes, if you decide to change the orientation of your wardrobe, you can actually remove them. You can either use a screwdriver to just pop them out, so use a flathead, or you can use a drill and just drill into that same hole and the plastic basically disintegrates. I really love how this added so much more of a high-end feel to this IKEA Pax wardrobe. So 400 was essentially just these two. And then like these two, I still want to do up there, down here. And I'd love to even get in here. You can see some of them. I'm so anal. I installed the crown molding. And to be honest, I thought it was going to be really easy, but it turned out to be a big hot mess. So let me share with you what I did wrong. First, I added two by four pieces onto my Pax wardrobe. I used a clamp and then I drilled from the inside of the wardrobe upwards and I secured a bunch of these little pieces. Then I added this leftover flat stock that I already had. It's just like a four inch trim um, and I attached it to those wood two by fours. And this just allows your crown molding to have something to actually stick on to because unless you do this, your crown molding is just not gonna stay up. There's nothing for it to hold on to. I used a brad nailer to attach that flat stock to the 2x4s. We're ready to cut our crown molding. Um, I've got my two pieces here. I only got them cut six inches longer than I need because you get them cut by the foot. And now I'm thinking I should have actually gotten some extra space because if I have a wrong cut, like it's kind of too bad for me. Um, there's a lot of videos on how to cut crown molding and I don't really understand why you can't just cut them like you would with regular molding but I'm gonna follow the videos and I guess I'll find out. So I've watched that video like a hundred times. Luckily my saw actually has this marking and it like clicks into place. It also has the marking for the bevel. Okay so we're gonna try this and hope that it goes well. I'm not going to do a detailed tutorial on how to cut crown molding because there's a ton of videos out there that explain this much better than I do. But basically, you need to make sure you angle the saw and also bevel your cut as well. And 
I didn't do this, but I wish I had. I wish I got a couple of extra feet of crown molding and made some practice cuts so I could actually like match up the pieces and visualize which way to cut them and make sure I was cutting them the right way. Because as you can see here, I'm like really confused and I'm trying to visualize this, but I'm not quite sure if I got this right. Always good to make a few practice cuts and make sure you have a bit of scrap wood. But um, you can see like this is how the crown molding goes. Okay, so this is how it's gonna go up against my packs wardrobe. So now I have to cut that small piece as well. It's show time. Let's see how this crown molding fits. Now, I really think this is a two person job because kind of like one person has to hold it on one end while the other person nails it in. So let's just cross our fingers and see how this goes. A lot of back and forth between me and Abbas about which nailer I should use. Um, here's the problem, okay? This lip is like so, so small. So you want the nail, it has to go in this lip because of the angle. Like this is hollow back here, you see? So it's a very small lip that can actually be nailed into. Now the Brad nailer would have been my nailer of choice, but it has a bigger lip. And so I was very scared that it would either be sticking way out or it would just split the wood. So that's why here, you can see this here, the pin nailer, the lip is really small and it fits really nicely there. As I installed this crown molding, I quickly found out why people are so confused with how to cut crown molding because it seemed like it was really going okay when I put the first piece on, but then when I put that little side piece on, that's when it really fell apart. I honestly had no idea why this turned out like this. Like it may just made no sense to me. So I did what any rational person would do. I took the crown molding down and I thought, okay, I'm gonna start again. So I guess that might mean I need to get new crown molding and start from scratch. But to my surprise, when I took it down, actually the corners lined up perfectly. So this confused me even more. Like, look, doesn't that look like it's correct? I did that correctly? Like, I have like blown. I've been DIYing for a long time guys and my best advice when you get stuck is just to take a breather from it. Don't push on, get a good night's sleep instead, take a breather, don't think about it, and then come back to it. So what I actually thought happened was maybe I didn't attach the crown molding to my trim at the right angle. So instead of trying to cut my crown molding again and wasting money and time, I thought I would just try and reattach it one more time and not be as tight with all the nails. And look, it worked. Okay, sorry for the extreme angle, but I wanna show you what I did. So these two corners were not meeting up. They were just flopping apart. So typically you would nail like to the ceiling, right? And like, you know, crown molding holds into the ceiling. So I actually put a nail in this way. I need to still put in a nail this way, but you have to nail the two corners together to make the crown hold. So I would say that corner is pretty darn good. Like, of course there's some cleanup I have to do filling in holes and stuff, but it's pretty darn good. Okay, one thing before <laughs> we close this off. So the terminology on crown molding and directions are really confusing. So this is actually considered outside left. And I'm like, why would this be the outside left when actually this is my right hand? So it turns out this is outside left because that's like the hand you would hold it in, right? This one is called outside right. Sorry, it's blurry. Outside right, because you'd hold in your right hand. I thought it would be left because this is on the left side of the, the wardrobe. So just make sure you know what you're talking about before you start.
I'm just so excited that I'm at the stage where I can paint this. And then my wardrobe is done. Are you ready to see it? Here it is, my Ikea Pax wardrobe, and isn't this so beautiful? Like, can you even believe that this is Ikea? I can hardly believe it myself. It turned out exactly as I wanted it to. The doors, they're from Ikea, but they are so beautiful. That crown molding at the top adds so much character to elevate this cabinet. And those gold handles really make it look so much more timeless and classic. On the inside, this is so functional. I love how I can store different length of clothing, like my shirts versus my dresses. I've got so many drawers that are perfect for my sweaters and my pajamas. And then I've got all this amazing customization where I've added the jewelry organizers. And I also built this custom bangle holder, which is so, so enjoyable for me. It has all my bangles and they're so organized. And I've even got out of season storage. So what else could you really ask for from an organizer? Now, if you're interested in my one year review of this wardrobe, head over to that video and check it out because I'm going to be sharing all the things that I love that I did with this and some of the things that I regret. Plus, I do an in-depth closet tour too. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for lots more IKEA hacks and more budget DIYs.